sen jahdastyötä sitten nimenomaan Koska tämä on oma rupunut Abdel Azizi ila Adihi ibn Adihim. Inna li imani faraida wa sharaia wa hududan wa sunanan. Faman istakmalaha istakmal al-iman. ومن لم يستكملها لم يستكمل الإيمان فإن أعيش فسأبينها لكم حتى تعلموا بها وإن أموت فما أنا على صحبتكم بحريص وقال إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام ولكن يطمئن قلبي وقال معاذ اجلس بنا من لؤم ساعتين وقال ابن مسعود اليقين الايمان كله وقال ابن عمر لا يبلغ العبد حقيقه التقوى حتى يدع ما حاط في صدره ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي يا رب صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم My respected elders and young brothers and my mothers and sisters who are undergoing chapter from the book Sahih al-Bukhari is the chapter of iman And in the previous our circles we were explaining those eight verses of the Quran through which Imam Bukhari rahimahullah trying to prove that Iman increases through our zikr, our righteous deeds. And today, after these eight verses, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah trying to prove that Iman does really increases through the sayings of Sahaba and Ta'been. The foremost saying he has quoted here is the saying of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, who he was, he was the eighth Khalifa of Banu Umayyah. And he, he was a governor for 22 years. He was the governor of Medina al Munawwara and Egypt. And they say he was a man who loved and liked wearing very expensive clothes. And he was really fond of wearing expensive clothes and flying on his body and his and his clothes, expensive fragrance. And they say whenever he would be walking and after he had passed by footpath or someone's house, people knew that Umar bin Abdul Aziz had passed from here. They could smell the you know, they Ether he used to use, very expensive ether he used to use. And they say, if you look at the lifestyle of Umar bin Abdul Aziz before he became Khalifa, and if you look at his lifestyle after he became Khalifa, no one could have thought that this young man, this young man will become such a just and a pious and a devout ruler. You know, there was no link of his previous life while he was a governor of Medina and uh, Egypt with the life of, of his, you know, when he became Khalifa. He totally changed. And he, he issued many orders. One of the orders he issued was, you know, Imam Bukhari quoted here, and he wrote this, Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And now let me explain what relation he had with Hadrat Umar, uh, Umar bin uh, 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 Umar bin Khattab, what relation he had with Hadrat Umar Farooq. 
You remember I mentioned, and you've heard it from ulama Ikram, that when Umar Adilahu once was patrolling, you know, he used to go around and just to find and see what's happening with the people. And when he passed by a house and he, he heard a woman saying to her daughter, mix add some water with the milk. And, and, the, and the, the young girl was saying to the mother, uh, we can't do this because uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you know, he, he said, you know, he prohibited us from doing this. So the mother said, well, he's not here, he can't hear us, he's not present. But she said, the young woman, the girl said, if he's not here, Allah is watching us. Now, Umar who he was really surprised to hear this answer from a young girl. And he kept the, you know, the, the location in his mind. And later on, he, he said to his son, Asim, you know, one of his sons was called Asim. He said, go and propose this girl. You know, send a proposal of marriage. And I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create from the generation of this young girl a young man who will rule the entire Arab. Now, he, Hazrat Umar's son, Asim, got married with this girl. And then, she gave a birth to a girl and this girl from you know she grew up and she had a child whose name was Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz was Umar Farooq's son Asim's grandson. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz you know they say before him was Suleiman bin Abdul Malik was a Khalifa and before Suleiman bin Abdul Malik was Walid bin Abdul Malik. You know they say the people used to say Walid bin Abdul Malik he was really fond of the constructions you know having lavish palaces and in those days, in the days of Walid bin Abdul Malik, when people used to sit together, they used to talk about buildings. You know, because their ruler, you know, his whole interest was in buildings. And this interest transferred into the general public. And the people, when they used to sit, before people sat together, they would talk about the building. They look at the building and then, you know, how tall this building is, how good, how, you know, how you know, this building is. So, you know, the entire conversation would take place around you know, buildings. Then came Suleiman bin Abdul Malik and he was a Khalifa and he had an interest in something else and his interest was in two things, food and women. Now this interest transferred into people when four people together put together when they sat they would talk about food, they would talk about women and they would say, you know, so and so woman, you know, how you know beautiful she is, you know, she go horn, you know, long hair, you know, she go big eyes. You know, this was, you know, the, the conversation would take place all the time in the days of Suleiman bin Abdul Malik. Because Suleiman, who was a Khalifa, who was a ruler, you know, it was his interest of food and women all the time. Then came Omar bin Abdul Aziz. Now, in the days of Omar bin Abdul Aziz, when people say four or three people got together in the sat, now the conversation was totally different. When four people, five people got together, sat, you know what they used to say? How many parties have you read last night? You know what they used to say to each other? They used to ask one another, how many rakats you read last night? How much zikr you've done last night? Whether they sat at night or they sat at daytime, they would ask one another how much ibadat you have done. This was the conversation of people in the days of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. That how much ibadat you have done. Why? Because the ruler, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he himself was the worshipper. He was the pious and the devout 
ruler and this you know this transferred into the people and the people used to encourage one another they would ask one another so what we've learned from here that you know to ask one another you know how much ibadah you've done last night this will, this will encourage one another you know there's encouragement in this you know this you know in, in, in our days we don't ask one another you know we think you know this this will come into riya you know it will it will will come into show off you know show off is only when your need is you know that of showing off but if we ask one another how much ibadah you've done last night if this person the one you asking he hasn't done anything by you asking him this will give him encouragement you know he will think you know he's asking me for this and maybe he has done the ibadah so he's asking me so this will you know this will give him a bit of a boost and then he will all start doing the ibadah so in the days of umar bin abdul aziz people used to talk about ibadah people used to talk about the recitation of quran how much you, how much quran you finished and how many days you finished the quran you know people used to ask in those days did you finish the quran in 7 days did you finish the quran in 3 days or did you finish the quran in 1 month so this this was the conversation used to take place in the days of umar bin abdul aziz and umar bin abdul aziz he was the one who wrote a letter who, who wrote to the governor adi bin adi adi bin adi was also a tabi'i they say there were three you know he belonged to a tribe called inda you know adi bin adi who was a governor in the days of umar bin abdul aziz and umar bin abdul aziz wrote him a letter and in the letter what he wrote imam bukhari rahmatullah has quoted here in his book they say adi bin adi belonged to tribe kinda and there were three people three personalities from the tribe of kinda they were such pious and they were such god fearing that when people faced drought and there was no rain if the people made dua and they made in that dua these three personalities medium and wasila allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the wasila of these three personalities would you know would answer the dua and straight away it would start raining when ever one was facing you know the uh, this enmity of his opponents and he made a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against his opponents or the enemies by the wasila of these three personalities allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer his dua and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help him against his enemies so who who these three personalities were one of them was adi bin adi to whom hazrat umar bin abdul aziz wrote a letter and the second and the second was raja bin haywa you know who he was raja bin was raja he was the one who advised suleiman bin abdul malik suleiman bin abdul malik before he died you know he was sitting in his room and and raja bin haywa was his personal advisor and they say raja bin haywa he had been personal advisor of many kings you know he was personal advisor of suleiman bin abdul malik and he was personal advisor advisor before suleiman bin abdul malik uh, his brother uh, walid bin abdul malik so one day he went to, he entered his room and he saw him he was writing something so he asked him what are you doing or or amir al mu'minin he said he said um, i don't know how much i will live and i'm just writing a will and in the will i'm writing that after my death after my death my son he will be the khalifa in the raja bin haywa he said can i advise you or amir al-mu'minin he said yes he said my advice to you is your son is too small you know his age is too small you know he is not capable of being a khalifa so he said so what do you say then so walid suleiman said to him what do you reckon what do you what do you suggest he said oh amir al-mu'minin if you if you mention some names then i can i can you know i can comment 
So he started mentioning the name. So what do you think about this person? What do you think about this person? When he came, you know, he, he brought a whole big list. Then in the list, it was the name of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. As soon as he heard the name of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he said, stop here for a little bit, meaning, this is the man you should make Khalifa and you should nominate that he should become Khalifa after death. So then the Suleiman bin Abdul Malik, he said, he changed his mind, he said, okay, that's fine. You know, they say, they say, this advice, this advice, this opinion, which Raja bin Haywa gave it, gave to Suleiman bin Abdul Malik to make Umar bin Abdul Aziz his Khalifa after his death. You know what they say? Mulana Abu Hassan Ladri, Rahmatullah, you know what he writes? He says, his, this one advice, what his opinion, that don't make your son you know, Khalifa, don't nominate your son as a Khalifa, you know, nominate Umar bin Abdul Aziz, that he should be a Khalifa after death. They say his, this one advice was better than thousand Nafli Ibadat. Morana Abu Hassan Nadvi writes, his, this small piece of advice to the ruler was better than offering thousand Nafli so, so I was saying the three personalities, Adi bin Adi and Raja bin Hewa and the third was Ubad bin Saba. These three personalities were such when anyone made a dua by making them a wasila and medium, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straightway accepted their duas. So Omar bin Abdul Aziz, he wrote to Adi bin Adi saying, Inna bin imani fara'ida. There are some obligations. You know, when one believes in, in Allah, then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has given, you know, made a few, some things far upon us, obliged upon us. He said, Inna li imani fara'id. You know, the iman, it includes obligations. There are some, like, you know, the five days of prayers, hajj, zakat, fast in the month of Ramadan, and shara'i'a, meaning some laws, which, you know, the ulama, they write, meaning, you know, the akhirat and rising after death. One has to believe in all these things. Wahududan and some limitations, which means, some ulama limitation means every ibadat has a beginning and an end which means the fast, it begins from when the, when the dawn breaks and it ends when the sun sets. And the prayer, it begins when one says Allahu Akbar and it ends on, on the salam, when a person says Assalamu Alaikum and is right and left. So he wrote, he wrote, Omar bin Abdul Aziz wrote, that the Iman, it includes obligation and it includes laws, limitations and it includes Sunan, the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which means, what he trying to say? He's saying, then he said, whosoever will follow them and whosoever will act upon them, his Iman will be complete. And whosoever will not act upon them, his Iman will remain incomplete. So Imam Bukhari, what he is trying to prove by, by the saying of Umar bin Abdul Aziz that this Iman which we have in our heart, it increases through the um, righteous actions, through our prayers, through our fast, through our hajj, through our zakat and many other good deeds. And then Umar bin Abdul Aziz wrote to him, he said, if I get the time and if I get the chance to live a bit more, I will explain to you all these things so that you can act upon them. But if I don't get a chance and I die, then remember, I'm not so eager for your company. You know, meaning that, you know, I'm not so eager to live here. You know, I'd rather go to Akhirat. So this was Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah has brought his you know, saying that, you know, through these 
righteous deeds, a person can you know, increase his iman. So the lesson from today's verse is that the, our iman which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us, now it is our duty to increase this iman. And this iman can only be increased by coming to the masajid, by sitting in the majlis of the pious people, and by recitation of Quran, and by remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this majlis of the hadith, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it means of our forgiveness. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunia hasanatum fi al-akhirati hasanatum fi al-adhaab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana qabal minna inna kanta sami ul alim. Wa tub alayna inna kanta tawab al-rahim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala la khayri khalkihi. Muhammad wa la alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Fi rahmatika ya rahmatul rahmin.